What's up guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Tokina Cinema Zoom 50 to 135 T3. We're gonna be putting it through a bunch of different tests from flaring, breathing, bokeh, checking if it's par focal, as well as sharpness and edge distortion. So we got a bunch planned for you. If you guys wanna jump ahead to any specific test, I'll throw links to all of them in the description below. But without further ado, let's jump right into the first test of the 50 to 135. So because this lens is a zoom lens, 50 to 135, the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is to see if this lens is parfocal. We're gonna do that by zooming in, focusing on our target, and then zooming out. And if it is parfocal, it should stay locked on that focus point throughout the whole zoom range so we're not having to readjust it. Something else that's a little interesting you might see here is you're seeing some vignetting as we do the zoom, which you don't really see in any of the other tests we show. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the bokeh. Right now we're at 50 millimeters. We're focused at five feet away, which is where the chart is. And we're just going through the aperture range from T22 all the way down to T3 wide open. And you're getting some really circular bokeh. For only having nine aperture blades, it actually stays pretty circular through the whole thing. You're not really getting any of those hard, sharp edges, which is really nice to see. Next, we're gonna jump in and check it out at 135 millimeters. We've moved the chart back to 13 feet, six inches, and then we have those lights right behind it. Again, very similar effect. You're not getting any of those hard edges as we're going through that aperture range. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is breathing. Again, we're going back to 50 millimeters, and we're just going through the focus range from close focus all the way to infinity. And this lens has quite a bit of breathing. I actually wasn't expecting to see this much breathing on this lens. If you look on the left side, you can see all of that paint and stuff on the back wall there, zooming in and out as we do this rack focus, which is pretty crazy. Then we're gonna punch into 135 millimeters. We have the light set up behind it and we're just doing that rack focus again from close focus to infinity. And you can still see it, it does have a little bit of that effect, but it's not nearly as much as we saw at the wider end at 50 millimeters. But it's definitely a lot more than I was expecting for this lens. Next, we're gonna take a look at edge distortion and sharpness, starting at 50 millimeters. We're wide open at a T3, and we're just gonna pan from side to side to see how the sharpness is on the edges and if there's any distortion or stretching in the face. And in this shot, there definitely isn't any of that focus shift, which is great to see, and barely any noticeable stretching. You can also see we have that really nice bokeh in the background with that really circular round edges. This lens does a really good job at holding that focus. There's no shift back to my ears or forward, as well as not having barely any distortion in the image. Now we're gonna jump into 135 millimeters, again, wide open at a T3, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. So panning from side to side, Again, holds that sharpness. I wouldn't expect this to be any different because the mechanics are the same. And then again, almost no distortion. It is a telephoto type lens, 135 millimeters. So I wouldn't expect to see much distortion on the edges. Up next, we're gonna take a look at chromatic aberrations. Here we are at 50 millimeters and I'm just racking focus slightly on either side of our subject. We have the light shooting into that white panel. So we have a dark foreground object with a light background and that's gonna show any imperfections in the chromatic aberration. And this lens does a really good job here we've punched into 135 millimeters and you're barely seeing any of those chromatic aberrations. Occasionally you'll see a little bit of purple on the left side, but overall it's really good. The last thing that we're gonna take a look at is the flaring. First starting at 50 millimeters, we're gonna go with the light inside the frame and you can see a ton of different elements in here. If you look across, there's a ranging of colors from green to yellow, purple, blue, orange, teal, and it looks really good. It, it, it is a lot. I do think it looks really nice and it's a really smooth bokeh. It's not any like really hard edges or obstructing or getting in the way of the shot. Now we're gonna do the same thing and just putting the light outside of the frame to see if it flares or streaks across the frame. And I'm not really getting too much flares. Again, you can just see a lot of those elements, but you're just getting a nice like purple blooming color coming from the light source. And then all of those elements that are in there going less into the corners and then you're able to see more of those as we put the light back into the frame. Now we'll jump into 135 millimeters. Definitely seeing a lot less of those elements. You really only get that one sort of white teal orb at the end. But overall, this one has a lot less flares than at 50 millimeters. And we're just gonna do the same thing, panning around so you can check it out. And then back to center. And then we're gonna go outside the frame to see if it streaks across on the inside. At 135 millimeters, you're barely seeing any flares, occasionally at the top and the bottom, but when you're in the corners, you're not seeing really anything coming across the frame. And then we'll just go right back to center. 
Hope you guys enjoyed that little test of the Tokina 50 to 135. If you like this lens and want to try it out for yourself, I'll throw a link in the description below, so definitely go and check that out. Also, if you guys want to see more lens tests on the channel just like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.